answers. Um, anybody got a good question? Yes. If you're going to have a mother plant that you want to grow, what's the minimum amount of dirt? How long can you keep a mother plant? Well, I know you can keep it for a long time, but I'm just asking if you're having it, what's the minimum amount of dirt? Oh, what size, what size container? Mother plants always like big containers. Unless you grow on an aqua farm or something where you can like cut the roots once in a while and change the water, and, you know. But if you're inside, you don't want the plant Well, well, you don't need that big of a container because you're totally, you need a lot of food. You need a big enough container. Um, you need a lot of food because you want it to grow really healthy all the time. Every time you clip it, you want it to come back really strong with more shoots. So you need a big enough, you don't need a super swimming pool sized container. Like, you know, even five gallons is pretty good size container for a mother plant. As long as you, you're on it with your pH and your food, and you keep those roots really healthy, then that's what matters, you know? And the plant is always telling you how it feels. If you always go and look at your plants, you look at the leaves, you see if you see any signs of spider mites or thrips or white flies or, or root gnats or any pests like that or powdery mildew, you know, it's like any of these How pests. How simple is that? It's just do what um, Go to the doctor. So um, you, 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 you always like look at your plants closely because that's the best thing to do. That always tells you if you're doing stuff right or if you're doing stuff wrong. If you're doing stuff wrong with hydro, you don't get much of a chance to correct it. It goes down really fast. If you're doing stuff wrong in soil, you can, most of the time you can fix it. If your pH is really off, you can usually bring it back. In hydro, once your pH goes off real bad, everything croaks. Yes? Um, well, one of, one of the things I always do with my plants is super cropping. And since I grow in beds of uh, 20 <laughs> plants to 25 plants each, I, I, I look at the plants in the bed that were all planted at the same time. And there's always some, for some reason, that will be a little bit more stretchier than others. So I go up to them and I'll bend, I'll like squeeze the branch in between my fingers and then I'll gently bend it over and I'll leave it and it'll take three or four days and then that branch will heal itself and in the meantime all the branches that are underneath it will get, will get stronger and thicker because as that top branch is hanging down after you bent it the branches that are underneath it, they think, they can see open sky. <coughs> and that makes a different hormone happen that only happens in the top branches. So all of a sudden, these secondary branches, they think they're top branches because the main branch is down below them. And it takes like four or five days for it to come back up with this elbow. In the meantime, those four branches that are underneath it, they become just as thick as the main stalk. Oh wow, I brought some in the other room. I'll get, I'll, I'll get this sample and I can show you in a minute. But, in a little bit. So, um, super cropping not only helps your yield, but it helps you make an even canopy on your plants so that if you go in your room and you look from above, it looks like the top of the table when it's as good as it can be. Every plant is basically the same height, either through bending or through a plant being a little stunted. Everything is basically the same height so that it's getting light equally, especially on the top colas, which are the ones that are the most valuable and the ones that are the most medicinal. 
So super cropping plants is something that I do to every one of my plants. And I do it more than once. I do it up to the end of the third week in flowering in 12-12. I keep bending my plants so that they get the best light in the best position they can in the grow room. And then after, after that third week in flowering, I stop bending because the branches get much less flexible. And when you bend them, they can actually break when you can lose the top. So by the end of the third week in 12-12, you have to have everything bent the way you want it in your room, because that's about it. <coughs> Any other questions? Oh wait, hold on a minute. Let's see. That's the fire of a super crop. Nothing is this is a, a plant that I grew on my rooftop this summer. There's so many. And you can see that this main branch right there, I bent it. You can see that bend in it. But this was the main stalk. So you don't pinch it, just bend. You pinch it first and you you mush the pulp together so that it's almost flat and then gently you bend it and then this elbow right here is what forms after it heals and it's like hard as a rock this is the strongest part of this whole plant is right here in this elbow but you can see these other four branches that were underneath it they got just as thick as the main branch so instead of getting you did it too low. You can't? No, I didn't do it this low. I did it, I did it up here, like it was maybe this much of the plant left where I bent it. You can't bend it down here. This is just how it grew later on. See, see, once I bent it, this branch, this branch, this branch, and this branch, they all became major tops. And then, like two weeks later, this branch finally made it back up. And then, there it was, and it, instead of being the only top on the plant like it normally would be, it had four sisters. <laughs> so I got five giant branches on this plant, which gave me, I got 150 grams off this plant. The best time to do that is from, let's say, no, let's say from clone. <laughs> you don't do clone, okay, from seed. You need to start doing it around six weeks. Six weeks of growth. Yeah, yeah, because it, it bends best in the growing stage, in the vegging stage. In the flowering stage, the more it gets into that flowering, the less it's able to do that, that, that comeback. You know, a lot of times if you bend it later on, it stays bent. It, it never stays, it, you, you, you did it too late. You have to start doing it earlier and keep looking, keep looking at like, how am I gonna bend this to get the best buds, the most optimum position? In whatever space, it doesn't really matter. The smaller the space, it's even more important than a bigger space. Just like the Dutch are doing when they're trellising. Yes, yes, I mean, it's just, it's training a plant. You know, these plants love to interact with human beings and get trained to be the way you want them to be. Yes. Drip irrigation. Well, you know, plants love to get what they need. A plant that gets what it what, what it needs in the correct pH and all that will give you so much more in every way than a plant that's neglected somehow. So, you know, I mean, any way that can be thought of to enhance the growing ability of these plants makes it better. Yes, just being caring, you know. Cannabis teaches you the art of being caring because if you can help nurture a plant, you can definitely help nurture a human being. And the art of nurturing anything on this sacred planet is quite a good thing to learn. Another question? <laughs>